Hey guys, and welcome to another one-on-one podcast, or I should say 1v1 podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Vladis, and this is Vladis Gaming, and I am joined by the one and the only, Luki. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm great. Excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually really excited about this because I feel like you're one of like the OG, like Ashes creators. And, yeah. you know, uh, I, I just, again, like I think with this Valentine's Day, uh, little thing that they gave all the OG creators a shout out. I thought that was so brilliant and I really, really love that. Oh, I, I did. Uh, okay, they didn't show, but I did this really funny thing where I was dressed like this and I went in the snow <laughs> and I was like, oh, it was glorious. And I was like, um, I don't know, like happy Valentine's. I don't know what I said, uh-huh. but I had like longer hair and I think it looked like I was naked. <laughs> So I think oh, that's no. why they didn't use it. <laughs> but oh my god, it was glorious. But if you look carefully, you could see that I had this underneath. Oh yeah. No, I'm sure. Oh, I'm, I'm sure so it was sad. awesome. You should probably release like the uh, the uncut yeah. version so we can all see. <laughs> yeah, I should put it on YouTube, the uncut version where I look naked <laughs> in the snow, oh, recording for ashes. So, <clears throat> I guess my first question I usually ask people on this is. Um, like so your gaming history what does that look like i mean like how long have you been a gamer um so as a kid i gamed but then i stopped gaming when i was like 14. i was like i'm a real girl now and it's time to get my shit together and get my life together so i stopped like gaming when i was 14 and watching cartoons Uh but then i got uh, into gaming because my boyfriend's brother is like a extreme gamer Mm. and that's how i got into gaming because I played uh, games on his PC, played like Overwatch and stuff. Oh, okay, so like, uh, so your your first, I guess, forte back into gaming was actually on the PC. It wasn't like on, yeah, like PlayStation no, or okay. And what kind of PlayStation or what kind of PC games did you get into originally? Uh, I think I played like Mortal Kombat a bit, and I beat my boyfriend's ass. <laughs> was awesome <laughs> that's awesome oh my god yeah i played yeah. all the mortal kombats one two Ooh. three four ultimate i did it all when it came to the mortal kombat series oh but, that's awesome so what was i guess your first uh i was overage oh okay. that really got me into gaming yeah okay. got like more than 1k hours in overage oh okay i mean i I didn't really get too much into Overwatch because it just, and I was a huge Blizzard person, so I played World of Warcraft. Mm. That was my main game for almost 16 years that I played. So I played, yeah, I played that game for a long time and very sad by the recent, I mean, it's not even really the recent stuff, like the whole allegations and the scandals that have been happening. I quit because the game just sucks. Like it's, it's horrible. The game loops, the uh the feeling of progression the the mandatory you have to do this activity in order to progress it just it wasn't feeling good anymore in world of warcraft and did you ever play world of warcraft uh i played but i feel like as a new player it didn't really caught my attention was Mm -hmm. so i started playing like last few years Mm -hmm. so i feel like as a if you play right now you have like a certain expectations over a game Mm-hmm. And it was like an older game and I don't know, the quests were boring because you do the same thing over and over again. Go there, kill that. I don't know. It felt really boring as a new player. Okay. So I know for me, like, um, it's really hard too because they've tried to enhance the, the new player experience, uh, even in this recent expansion. And I feel like it was good, but I feel like it just wasn't enough. There was too many other things that really just didn't give the player the new player a good after level 10 it didn't give you really a good experience after that so um i guess you know because i see you play like call of duty i see you play like a lot of stuff on your stream like so what are you doing like right now like what's your mindset Uh, right now i'm waiting for ashes (laughs) just like everybody else (laughs) just waiting for ashes just playing whatever (laughs) yeah no yeah go ahead go ahead no i'm just gonna play uh what am i gonna play Elder Ring and then the cycle and um, hopefully Ashes 2 is out by then. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So 
And I know once people hear this, it's it's going to be next Wednesday. So this is actually pre-recorded on the Thursday before the mm. Ashes live stream. So, you know, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to talk about the character creator, which I'm super excited oh, yeah. about, or even like the updated uh, combat that they said they were going to actually show us tomorrow. Uh, I'm really or on that Friday. So um, I guess let's, let's go ahead and let's let's talk about Ashes then. So yeah. <laughs> so what was it about the game? that really drew you in yeah I, I feel like this story is really funny because uh -huh. so i'm not into the mmos because every mmo i played as a new player they just sucked okay like they never got me more than like 10 hours max okay but most mmos are like old mmos you know so i feel like as you if you play a game now that was released a while back it's completely different experience because the graphics and everything you know it's not just it's like different when you play now than when it was released so yeah that and with ashes uh alex my boyfriend has been like obsessed with it for like a while and he was watching <laughs> every video on youtube with ashes and uh it's, it's really cool can i get a blankie or like the hit we broke the heat and it's so cold here. Oh my god, it's actually cold here, so people don't even notice. But I actually have a blanket too, so we can we can bundle together. Yeah, so we should. I, I'm gonna do the same. Get my blanket too. Like I'm shivering. Oh my god. Okay. It's so funny. Like the heating is broken, and we don't want to fix it because it takes too much time. <laughs> no, I totally get it. <laughs> <laughs> just leaving with it so so it was really your boyfriend and i feel like for me too right so my wife she does not game at all uh i mean mm. as far as like pc stuff right so we're actually yeah. her desk is right behind me but we're still in the process of getting like a, a gaming pc for her and but you know it's so weird how i talk because i am an ashes creator myself right i'm a small one you know i'm an I'm, i just started last month in january but mm. i am so damn passionate for this game and i haven't yeah. been this passionate for a game since 2012 so i used to do a warcraft youtube channel that i got mm -hmm. up to about 1.7 subs but i let that fall off and i just i just wasn't passionate about wow even way back yeah. then in 2012 like anymore and so for me when i saw the lazy peon video uh in 2020 uh and i saw that actually on an asmund goal stream and then after we saw that steven saw him watching it and he said hey if you want to talk to me i can you know hop into discord and we can have a chat afterwards and i just thought that was the coolest thing ever because yeah. I've, I've never seen a, a head of a company wanting to talk to a streamer about their game because a lot of the developers don't want to talk to the public like they just don't and i felt with steven yeah. it was so passionate and just natural like he was just so natural yeah. about chatting or like i feel like the most of them uh if they want to talk they're really closed off of talking about the bad things you know oh, yeah. <laughs> like, only if it's like the nice stuff they can talk about no, no, not no, giving names sure. just saying <laughs> no for sure so yeah so when you saw that stuff in 2020 like what was it that triggered you to be like i i, I really want to play this game mm -hmm. So yeah, so my boyfriend was like watching a lot of videos and like showing me stuff. And then we went, so I barely got him to go on a date and we went on a date and we went and ate. And after we stood on a bench and like watching like classes on <laughs> and she's like seeing how they like work and everything. Total uh, nerds, I know. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. I love it. Yeah. So, so then I was like, I should really buy into beta one, uh, alpha one. Yeah, and I played the alpha one. And yeah. when I played the alpha one, I was like, yeah, this is nice. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's so weird because there wasn't really content in alpha one, but I, I literally saw you streaming it. I saw you loving it. Uh, I saw you playing with an old uh, WoW developer. Um, yeah, Kevin is the best. <laughs> yeah, Kevin Jordan. And I was like, oh my God, this is the coolest stream ever. Because Kevin, again, he's an OG. He, yeah. he created the original WoW. And to see him play Ashes just really warmed me up because yeah. I, I think like everyone else, right? We really do want Ashes to succeed. And I think someone like Kevin Jordan playing and really giving his feedback as to the good things they may be doing, the wrong things they may be doing or, you know, but I think as a technical, I mean, it was really more technical to really see like the node system yeah. structure. Um, all the classes weren't really represented yet in the alpha one. Um, 
but the the gameplay and the world oh my god like especially with ue5 now it's oh my god look, it's gonna be incredible it's gonna look so good <laughs> yeah like i cannot wait to see what what's in store for alpha 2 because i mean so let me just say this right off the bat because i just came out with a video recently on when i think alpha 2 is when do you think alpha 2 will come out so i think i said alpha after alpha 1 is going to be eight months Mm -hmm. uh, but then they switch to UE5 and that adds another two months. So mm -hmm. I feel like after 10, 12 months. So like in the summer, I think, I hope in the summer. That's exactly what I said. I said it's going to, yeah. because I said it's going to be one year after Alpha 1. So mm. one year after Alpha 1, we were going to go in and, and actually like go into Alpha 2. And even with, uh, Unre or, you know, with the Unreal Engine 5 stuff, the one thing that I kept on saying over and over is, yes, it's going to add a little bit of time, but it's also going to speed up. I want to save a lot, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like, especially from an art perspective, where usually art is usually the bottleneck for, you know, the back end stuff, because you can't code a quest, like which is in the back end, without NPCs or without the structure of the open world yeah. done. And so with, with all that front end stuff helping them, like I'm telling you, this Doesn't year, know. this year is going to be the most craziest year we've ever seen production wise. And I think uh, tomorrow is going to be very evident of that. I think every live stream we see going forward, excuse me, going forward, they just show more and more. They're going to show more and more because they're getting more and more done. It's going to be, I wouldn't say like exponential, but it's going to be a lot more than what we have been yeah. getting. So, yeah, and, and so what what is the most exciting thing for you to do in Alpha 2? Like, what do you think is... Oh, play with every class. Okay, so I feel like for <laughs> me, content is so important, but mm -hmm. like the way you make the content, so like all the classes and how they feel balanced and all the quests is what I'm really into, like... Mm -hmm. But they already did such a good job with the quests in the Alpha 1, so I bet they're gonna do a great mm -hmm. job in Alpha 2 too. But mm -hmm. making like that new player experience good that's mm -hmm. what i'm really <laughs> really so, like wondering and hoping they do it nice and so in, in your opinion what what is fun when you're questing because like i i, I recently uh played guild wars 2 like just a couple of days ago i've been so, so many people mentioned that the combat in guild wars 2 it, they want it to be like ashes and i could not get past level six because the the questing the overall intro experience for me was terrible in guild wars 2 and and again i i've played lost ark i've played world of warcraft i played star wars the republic final fantasy 14 but this uh fill up the heart quests where it's just fill like go kill things until the heart fills up was just not engaging yeah i played, yeah. It, I it played just, guild wars 2 and i stopped after like 10 hours <laughs> yeah yeah it, it just yeah it, it just doesn't catch you as a new player yeah so what what does catch you like what what do you feel is exciting when you're questing i feel like as a new player what you want to see if you're like a new memo player and ashes is going to bring a lot of new players because mm -hmm. people want to play mmo but there's nothing good at the moment my opinion <laughs> my humble opinion most of them they're not good <laughs> especially for a new player if you're not into really into mmos mm -hmm. so i want like uh to be really easy to understand you don't need to like spend to have like a phd in ashes to know how to do stuff you know like make it really like easy to understand and also feel um like second nature you know easy to understand I, I, yeah and like quests what i liked in alpha one a lot is like is that you get a lot of random quests Okay. Like you go in this place, you find by mistake this broken shell and you end up getting a quest. So you have a lot of like those random quests in okay. uh, Alpha, in Ashes that love. Uh -huh. Also, you have a lot of uh, quests that give you different options. If you pick this, the whole uh, storyline changes. So I, I okay. really love that. feels really, I don't know alive the game feels alive feels, not just static yeah immersive so it, it allows yeah. that immersion to to actually sink into you and feel like you're not just on a like on a railroad track you feel like you, yeah. you literally have everything open to you 
And I, I feel yeah. with the note system, that's to me, I think the most featured, like if there was any kind of base system that features Ashes of Creation, it's really the node system because yeah. it's everything in Ashes is dependent on the node system and how every system is almost literally interconnected. So you have like the node system, the caravan system, the naval system, you have like the religion system, you have the whole economy side of things, um, how the tier systems of the node work. Um, what do you think, like, how, how did you feel like when the nodes were leveling up in Alpha 1? Was that exciting? Was it was it cool? Well, it was amazing because it unlocks a lot of new content. Mm -hmm. So you kind of like did all the content you could, and then you leveled up the node and you got like, uh, now you could do a lot of new content, like mm -hmm. get better gear, like a lot of stuff now you could do that you couldn't do in the past. Okay. So yeah, it feels amazing. Also like uh, a lot of the times the nodes were like leveled up by the GMs. Uh -huh. But at some point you wanted to level up one node and everyone on the server was trying to level it up. Okay. So it was such a like a cool experience like trying to level up a node with like the whole server. It was super fun. <laughs> yeah, I can and that's the thing. I what I miss, and this is actually I'm working on this video. I'm gonna release it on Monday, so this will already be seen hopefully by by the time this this video releases. But I, I'm titling this video uh single player MMOs because I feel like massive multiplayer online role-playing games is disingenuous at this point. I yeah, feel yeah. like it's multiple independent uh, uh, games that are being made. Like, so they, they're basically almost forcing you to play by yourself and to yeah. experience this massive game by yourself. Like Lost Ark feels that way, World of Warcraft feels that way. As much as I love Final Fantasy XIV, even Final Fantasy XIV to me feels that way too. There's, uh, there's no reason to ever group up with people. Yeah. It, it only like it, it just allows you and it's so easy and convenient for you to do it by yourself. Now, do you feel Ashes is gonna be the same way? So in Alpha 1, it was not like that, and I hope they keep that. Like, it, it like, encouraged you to play with other players, but not in a, like, you kind of need players, but not in a, like, a mean way made you, like, yeah. then it, it didn't feel forced. But a lot of stuff you, you wanted to do with other players, like, even kill, like, a low-level boss, mm -hmm. you still needed to group up. Exactly. So, like, a lot of stuff you, you had to, like, group up. And, and that's the thing. A lot of right? like basic stuff too. So there were quests that had like a, like a suggested player of three players or five players, right? So like if there was like a little mini boss in the world, you couldn't just solo it. Like you would die. Yeah, yeah, you would die. And then everyone was like in the chat, who wants to do that boss or stuff like that? Yeah. Because you have a quest to kill that boss. So if you do it with people, it's way easier and you can't even do it alone. And, and, and so I think as long as they keep that principle, like yeah. Ashes will be successful in its own right just out of grouping because so yeah. many games don't allow the grouping uh, to happen anymore. And it feels like in other games, you kind of already need to have the friends to mm -hmm. do those things. Mm -hmm. But in Ashes, if uh, I list in the alpha, it was really easy to like find someone to do those quests, mm -hmm. like just randomly. You didn't have to already have like a group of friends to do anything. Yeah, like so, in other games. So the thing is, is that the world organically allowed you to actually get people from the server. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and so even with things like, because I know Steven doesn't want, and I don't want, and I'm sure you don't want, like a looking for group finder or uh, anything to actually randomize player generated players to help you quest or to help you do dungeons. Like you should do that on your own. Like you should have yeah, to seek yeah. out players and not feel, because I, I just feel like so many players now are so antisocial that they don't want to be social in an MMO which MMOs are, you're supposed to be social. You're supposed to go out and actually like find people to do stuff with. Like as an example, like the caravan system, that's a system that I'm very much looking forward to. Um, it'd be really dumb for someone to do that by themselves. Because- yeah, and most of them, you can't even do that by yourself. I don't think you even can. Oh, exactly. Depends on the caravan. Because if you have, if you're running the caravan by yourself and you have no protection, it being a PVX experience, two people can just go and jump you and take your care or take at least a portion of your caravan yeah 
Yeah, so there's just a lot of systems that I feel Ashes are is doing 100% like correctly. And and so I guess now let's kind of shift things a little bit because I know tomorrow we're going to be seeing the glimpse of the character creator. So I kind of want to talk about that a little bit. So oh, yeah, I have many opinions there. <laughs> okay, okay, so let's hear about those opinions. Like, so what would okay. you want from a character creator? I feel like most games that I play that have like really complex character creations, that was it. Just the character creation was fun. Everything else in the game sucked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and also as a new player, I don't want like a, the new player experience to feel really overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So I really hope that the UI they do and everything is really easy to understand. You don't want as a new player be overwhelmed by spending like five hours making your character and then go in the game and then be overwhelmed about everything else in the game. I want that for like a new player to be like really easy and simple. And if someone else wants to like create way more complex, have extra buttons for that, like have advanced uh, settings for that. So actually, I, I made a video on character creation, and that's exactly what I suggested. I suggested to have a simple UI yeah. with like a yeah, couple yeah. with a couple of switches and then have an advanced UI where it has a lot of switches, like a lot of toggles yeah, exactly. and, and, and little circle or the little circle die for color. Like so I, because I'm right there with you, I think as long as you can provide a streamlined experience for players, I think that'd be really good. Um, yeah. And so the one thing that I noticed in, uh, I don't know if you've ever played Black Desert Online, but the one thing that I liked about the character creator there was you. there was a, a player created library. So I'll just say for, for me, I don't like spending hours making a character. I don't. It's not a thing of mine. I just want to look badass in like 20 seconds and I'm good, you know? Mm -hmm. But what I liked about BDO was there were player creator or player created templates that you could just select and it's already all mm -hmm. done. Like, so if you like yeah. that look, you can just select it and boom, you're good to go. And I think Ashes should incorporate mm -hmm. something like that. Um, but the, so I do want to ask you this, how far do you want the character creation to go? Like, do you want it to break immersion? Do you want to see like Ronald McDonald, like in Ashes of Creation? Mm -hmm. Like, like for me, as, as long as it's like simple to understand, I don't care how far you take it. Okay. I just want it to like be simple, the UI to be simple. Mm -hmm. for like as, as a, I want like if a new player plays, doesn't need to spend too much time there. Mm -hmm. Like uh, if I, know, I made the video about the, um, how it was in Alpha 1. In Alpha 1 was great, like super simple, like just three options, something like that to have super simple. Easy to understand, really good UI, and then advance for who wants to play more, okay. who wants to spend way more time. And is there any kind of like specific feature that you want? Like, do you want it to, you know, uh, for like aging, like an aging feature? Do you want? Like, Damn, you, you feel really good. Oh no, I, yeah. I, I want to go oh, pretty far. Like, I, because I do want options, but I want it to be simple. Like, I, I want there yeah. to be a selection of options. Like, like if I want there to be a way to where I don't care about this option, I don't care about this option. I like that option. I like that option, and select which options you want to play with, and eliminate the rest. So that way it's simple. Mm -hmm. um, but I know for me, I do want there to be a numerous amount of options because they're touting and they're, Steven has said he wants this character creator to be the best character creator in the MMO market. Wait, when I heard that, I was so scared. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a big statement to say. Like, the, the, yeah. So I, as long as he makes the UI easy, I feel like it's fine. And I, for me, like the thing I care about is like hair. Most games have like short hair. Like mm. most characters only have short hair and one one or two options for long hair. So maybe just have like more options on the hair side. Yes. And I actually want hair, hair, multi hair color options. I like your hair, yeah. right? I want there to be an option to where if I want long black hair, I can have that. But if I want like, like purple or blonde, like highlights to go down this way, then I can do that. Like, I, I think mm. that would be really, really cool because there's not a lot of character creators that, that allow multi hair colors. It's just, you pick one yeah. solid color and, and that's it, you know? So having yeah. highlights would be really, really cool from that standpoint. What is the MMO I played recently? Yeah, Lost Ark had uh, a, a bit of like different colors. Yes, yeah, and like I said, there are some MMOs that do it, but it's just, it's not a a thing that all, like every yeah. MMO does. But so now going uh, a little bit into the combat side, um, did you like the way the combat was in Alpha 1? 
we you think it was yes and no it didn't feel i don't know natural it didn't okay. feel like i don't like net i don't like it just didn't feel natural i don't explain okay it felt like off it felt like it needs more work it felt okay do you, did you did you feel like it was like when you pushed a button it felt clunky it felt uh yeah it felt like clunky yeah okay so and like um, uh when you got like a multiple like mobs it was super weird to know on who you are like selected right now and mm -hmm. how you are fighting him you know because sometimes you'll select a guy to the left and you are actually wanted the guy to the right to select you know what's a bit like weird there with selection okay and to know who you are selecting and did you did you do it mostly tab wise or did you do it action wise when you were fighting? Uh, I tried both. I tried both. Action I still needed work. Still needed polished. Oh, like okay. a lot of it felt like. And and what do you feel like? Do you like? Do you personally want? Do you want it to be a hybrid system still, or would you want it just to be one or the other? No, hybrid is fine because it uh, it really gives you like the option if you want to play with that uh, with action you can with action, mm -hmm. and it's. It only felt hybrid when you're like in CGs or stuff like that. You know, actually like using a trebuchet or something. Then it's like, I don't know, felt natural to go in action mode, you know? Okay. It would be like weird with trebuchet and like select guys otherwise, you know? <laughs> and, and when you were playing Alpha 1, did you play a melee character or, a, or like a caster, like a mage? I played all of them. Oh, you played all oh, of them? I tried. Oh, okay. Yeah, I tried everything. <laughs> and so out of those classes, uh, which one did you feel felt like the most fun? I mean, the most one it felt like most work on was the mage. Okay. It felt really like polished and worked. The rest felt like not finished. Okay. And I don't Steve even think they were finished. Yeah, and I believe Steven said that a lot of the abilities in Alpha 1 were placeholder. So I believe that yeah. they wanted to have some type of like abilities to fight, you know, but I don't think it's actually like finalized abilities that were for the yeah. melee characters yeah. at least. Um, well, did you participate in the castle or the, the node siege that happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did a lot of siege. Okay, and how was that? <laughs> looking at it from YouTube was awesome. I can't imagine what it was like actually yeah. playing it. Well, that was really fun because you were able to do siege even with like less people. So I got to experience sieging with like 10 people. That was really fun. And I also got to experience sieging with like, I don't know, 100 people. Oh. That was like completely different gameplay, but like still <laughs> really, really fun. So did it feel like invict like uh, like you got your blood pumping and it was just like so much? Oh stuff. hell yeah, 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 yeah! <laughs> it's like really nice, and like uh, again, uh, it it made you like play good as a team. It made you like go in voice chat. It made you like coordinate. It it just like made you like play as as a unit. Awesome. Because if not, you'll get your ass kicked and then get pissed after a while. <laughs> Well, and you see, so I belong to a guild called Axiom, right? And it's so crazy even now that communities are literally being made for Ashes before the game's even out. Oh, yeah. And, and it's so crazy because, like, we have a pretty big guild. Like, Axiom is a pretty big guild. And how they talk about, like, a castle siege or a node siege is insane because they want like squadrons to be like north, south, east, west. They want scouts to be like on high places to see, you know, see where people are and it, like it reminds me of war like it oh like, yeah it, yeah it, so i've never seen an mmo pull off a war quite like in a realistic way and it, in yeah. ashes it feels yeah. very real realistic yeah i definitely felt and i also have like a lot of like um not just going for the castle you had other things you had to do like capture certain objectives gave you certain buffs and stuff like that oh wow yeah, so it like it makes you like find the niche you like and then get good at that. So it's was, it's it's really fun. It's gonna be amazing when you and everyone can do that. Awesome. Well, so I and guess, they plan to add a lot more stuff there. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm, sh thing. I'm sure they're definitely gonna add a, a lot of things. Now, the one criticism that I remember seeing back in like uh, 2021 when the alpha was going on was body blocking. Did you feel body blocking was an issue, or did you feel it not mm. fun? No, no, not not at all. But what do you mean by body blocking? So usually in MMOs, if you, you if a person's standing right here, you can just walk right through them. But no. but in ashes, if you go up to a person, you can't walk through them, so it blocks you yeah. from. You have to you have I mean, to go it, around them. I mean that's 
type of like gameplay and to get good going around them or like killing them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing that it does provide <laughs> gameplay. There yeah, was it's just, like part of the game. I think there was just a lot of people that are not used to that because again, in, in a lot of MMOs, you can just go right, you can phase right through people. Mm -hmm. So it was, it, so I think it was very jarring for a lot of people to see that yeah. you're you're wedged in somewhere and you can't move. But I think that's, yeah. you know, kind of in my, like more realistic in the sense if you're like in a small room trying to protect like the, the king seat or whatever, you know, like it, it's claustrophobic. It's supposed to feel claustrophobic. Yeah. yeah. So, well, that's really cool. I mean, so yeah, I feel like, yeah. or go ahead. Like the reason why I like Ashes is because I played before like uh, Escape from Tarkov. I don't know if you played it or if you know it. It's oh, like yeah. a really hardcore shooter. Mm -hmm. And like Ashes feels like a hardcore MMO. It's mm -hmm. like really grinding, like it's, it's way more hardcore than any other MMOs out there. Mm -hmm. So like, I feel like maybe a lot of people look for like a casual MMO, but I don't feel like Ashes is going to be a casual MMO. It's going to be really hardcore and a lot of grinding needed okay and and so um i guess do, do you think it's gonna be successful if it's just a hardcore mmo yeah i mean another thing with mmos you have mmos but how many do you have you barely have a few and you mm -hmm. like shooters you have so many shooters and they have like their own niche mm -hmm. but with mmos you don't really have that yet because they're not that many and i feel like a hardcore mmo is gonna definitely be something that people want well, I it's think, a and it's a niche that people want. I I do think it's a niche that people want. I think there have been MMOs that try to replicate a hardcore environment, but it failed because, well, the game just was bad, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> New World uh, tried to be a hardcore MMO, but then they shifted and went completely casual, uh, and even doing that shift. The game was still <laughs> completely terrible. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, Did you play New World, by the way? Yeah. Oh my god, I, I'm so sorry. I, don't know. <laughs> I, did like, I didn't want to play it, but then I only wanted to play, so I played with someone. Oh, okay. But uh, I, I want my money back. <laughs> yeah, no, I got my money back, thank God, because I only played oh, it for nice. like, I played it for like 20 minutes and I was like, nope, I'm done. That's not yeah. not for me. But so I guess my question to you is since you don't play a lot of MMOs what kind of new things like i guess um like quality of life like do you want or do you just want things in ashes to be hard because i i think there should be a little bit of a compromise for new players because i do want new players to try ashes but i don't want them to feel like uh this game has nothing for them like if they're not hardcore like i do want very light like i think the tavern like with the the stuff that can be done in the tavern like the card games and the dice games and all that kind of casual stuff and even like the the pet collection like i think that could be a very like not hardcore element so what do i you feel like or, go ahead. people underestimate like players <laughs> people <laughs> want and we've been waiting for so many years for like a good mmo so like you, you want to play an mmo and you when you do something to feel like you achieved something Mm -hmm. And like in uh, when Alpha One, when you go to level twelve, you're like, oh my god, you go to level twelve, nice, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, and that's what like I feel like a lot of players want want to like feel like they achieved something, and every step you do, it, it feels like an achievement, you know? No, correct. And, and, and not just you. Hmm. You can have like casual stuff. You like fishing is casual if if you don't get attacked, but. You still want like things to feel like you achieved something after you you've done it no correct like a sense of accomplishment so i guess for me right like a uh, leveling is to me a, a big thing right because the leveling i think uh <clears throat> excuse me leveling to me has always been traditionally boring because again, yeah. I, play, I played World of Warcraft for so long, so <laughs> leveling is not the best over there, okay? For sure. But I feel like, you know, playing Final Fantasy XIV, even though the questing was boring, what made it so much fun was the story. Like the cinematics, the the dialogue, the just, you know, the way they did all of the things in Final Fantasy XIV, that was yeah. fun. But the actual questing, like going back and forth, yeah. talking to this, it, it just wasn't that great now what do you feel like in leveling that you would want ashes to do i mean i feel like you you want 
you want to be like be hard so you feel like you achieve something you don't want like to be full level in like a week like where's the fun of that you know you want to like take a while to get there mm -hmm. and also you want to like level up by doing quests by killing mobs grinding like have like different things you can do at certain points to like level up faster mm -hmm. you know so you don't want just a uh this is the way to level you can't level outside yeah, no. of this you want multiple ways to do leveling yeah yeah okay. but like to be like uh, like you can level up to fishing but not too crazy because it's like fishing you know it doesn't want to be like the same as doing a quest like be like balanced but you can achieve from certain things at a certain point yeah and i i don't, don't forgive me from if i'm missing this but isn't there like a bulletin board in the no towns like that have like major quests like to do a dungeon or to complete like a, a world boss are there any quests like that in ashes uh they're all like don't they didn't have in uh city yet no oh, okay they're, all, they're like progressive most of them okay so a lot of them you just had to and talk uh, to the npcs yeah yeah but okay. that's good you want to talk to the npcs like a lot of the npcs are like had their own stories in their quest and stuff like that it's it, like really immersive and gets into the lore for sure by talking with them so I, this kind of leads me to the next point then so steven said that there's not going to be voice acting in ashes of creation yeah, i don't want voice acting no 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 please i feel like it takes away from the immersiveness what it really takes away from the immersiveness okay i feel like okay. a lot of mmo players okay then, uh, <laughs> are really used to like really big dialogues mm -hmm. or like really big stuff like that so maybe you don't want voice acting if it's like this big you know mm -hmm. and like really annoying and like overwhelming uh -huh. but in the alpha the questing didn't feel like that it was like still like sometimes big but it was like it's an understand and i don't explain and it gave you the text in chunks okay. so it and also like because you pick a different option you might have the different up, outcome it made you like pay attention okay you know so you are always paying attention if not you might get a different quest than your friend is getting okay. so you are learning the lore is like in small chunks and uh, you you like need to pay attention and the moment you like put voice acting and cinematics and stuff like that i feel like it takes away from uh the immersion and stuff because as a player you build in your own brain this it's like a book you know you create this world you create this character and in the moment you have cinematics and a voice it kind of you stop creating with your brain what's that character about you know okay it, yeah i've never heard it from that perspective just because for me right like <clears throat> I don't want everything voice acted, but if there is like a main story quest, I would love for that to have at least have the option to be voice acted because I feel like, you know, for, for someone like myself that is getting into ashes, I, I haven't been a streamer. I've never streamed before, but if I ever got into streaming, I feel like, vo like voice acting would elevate it, but even no, if I we'll, we'll take it away because the Oh, I'm gonna be nice and not swear because the <laughs> is talking over you and you want to talk and the guy doesn't stop talking and he goes and he goes and he goes and he goes and I'm like where can I talk with my stream no you don't want that <laughs> so you, you like how much more he goes <laughs> so you want to dictate the flow yeah exactly exactly gotcha. okay and and so far like I I haven't even really explored the lore of a uh, vera yet i i really want that to be something i do once i actually play uh ashes but what did you feel about the at least the story bits that you got oh it was really awesome so you had like the main stories and you uh -huh. started to learn from certain about certain npcs uh -huh. but you also like randomly got this you found this guy and got this quest and then you learn that he's the dad of this pirate you met in the past and he left her and that's why she's so like evil now and stuff like that is like super complex and gives a lot of info about like everyone it was, wow. it was super nice I mean, yeah really like complex i i've heard a lot of different things about the lore of vera and and again uh, steven got the eso narrative designer uh 
hired at Intrepid now. So, I mean, I know that the story is going to be pretty damn good. Uh, and I, I really can't wait to see exactly how they're going to construct the story, what kind of cinematics they're going to want to do for the story. Um, because again, like a lot of MMOs, like they always have something that makes that MMO special. Like in World of Warcraft, yeah. it's mostly about the rating. The game is basically a rating simulator. But if you look at Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy is more of a story-based game. So I'm really curious to see how Intrepid is going to tackle Ashes. Like what is Ashes going to be known like for? I feel like Ashes, it's all about gameplay all about being in the world and discovering doing stuff it's all about like being in, in in vera not about cinematics and other stuff those will just take away from the game i feel and and like in final fantasy most of the quests were pretty boring so you had to like give them something so give them cinematics mm -hmm. but in ashes they are so complex and so like nice you don't want to take away with cinematics and also cinematics cost money i prefer them to spend that money and make the game better than spending it on cinematics. Okay. Well, and voice a, acting. <laughs> that's a fair point. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm I, all about like gameplay, make it good. <laughs> well, and me too, I, because it's the gameplay that's going to keep people engaged at the end of the yep. day. Like a three minute cinematic, I mean, yeah, it's going to be nice and all, but that's not going to produce gameplay for you. That's not going to going to Yeah, not going to keep people playing. And so, um, what do you feel? Because I, at least to me, right? So it's always this rush to the end game. That's where mm. everything starts for a lot of MMOs, like New World, Lost Ark, Final Fantasy, uh, you know, World of Warcraft. You the 1249 experience is irrelevant. The game starts at level 50. Wait, and that's why the players don't like it. <laughs> and that's true. why like a lot of, uh, if you didn't got in at the beginning of the hype of the game, like back in the day, that's why most people don't don't get into it now. That's because of that and, and like what ashes did in alpha one that i really liked you had like stuff to do even as a level 10 that was amazing you had stuff to do as a level 12 it was amazing so i hope they keep those things like you can still do a boss as a level five you're gonna die but at least you can still watch from the side you know mm -hmm. or you, you still do like a lot of stuff well, and, and that's the thing, right? It's it's about keeping the pacing of leveling engaging because they do want leveling to matter. And I'm all for that. I don't want there to like most games now, you can hit end game in a day. Like literally. Yeah, like, I don't want that. And so what, what do you think is a good length? Like what would you think two weeks, three weeks, a month? Oh, more, 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 like a month, maybe more. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you want the because leveling? You want end game to be end game to be like something you green towards. Mm -hmm. Like in like Tarkov, if you I, not now because Tarkov is not fun now. In the past, <laughs> when it was actually fun, oh. if you wanted to get Kappa, you you could still play the game and have fun. But if you wanted to get like the end game, just like Kappa, you will have to green for a few weeks. You mm -hmm. know, you wanted to, like to feel special. And, and so you, yeah. you got there. And and I'm I'm complete. I'm on a complete agreement with you. I I feel like leveling. I am so down, especially because, again, there's going to be XP debt upon death. Uh, there's going to be multiple things to actually slow you down. It's not going to be this very streamlined experience to leveling because there's so many variables uh, as to what could happen in the open world. Um, yeah. Now, I do want to ask you one thing, because this is something that I've debated, you know, with a lot of people on is the XP uh, debt, right? When you die. Do you feel like that's too punishing? No. No, Not better at all. don't die. No. <laughs> no just don't I mean, die. I died a lot. I died a lot and I went down a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, it's fine. You get you you feel like if you don't die, if you don't get your ass kicked, you 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 don't learn. But then you get your ass kicked so many times, you get like done with it and then you learn how to get good at PvP. Like I was trash at PvP, I kept dying, but then I was like, I'm done with this. Now let me learn how to actually do this. So then, and then I learned how to do PvP. So it provided you an incentive to get better. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm. Or it gives you an incentive to like avoid play players. Okay. We like, or like camp, we like, we like, people will like adapt to it. Okay. And so it's, here's, I guess, my compromise in the xp debt route i per, because i come from a rating background i i did a lot of rating in world of warcraft that's that was my bread and butter that's what i love to do um 
And I think, in my opinion, it's bad to have XP debt when a mob kills you, like when a regular mob kills you, but I'm okay with XP debt being there for players killing you because I, I don't like the game punishing you um, when it's the, the game that's doing it, but when a player's doing it, I feel it's totally different. Now, what do you think about that? Do you think it, XP debt is okay. still okay? okay? Okay, I have many opinions. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. So, like, number one, I feel like a lot of older MMO players, they want Ashes to copy their game, you know? Correct. And I, I want to kind of like, people should like just, Ashes it's a new game, it's a new era for MMOs, like, that's in the past, it worked then, it's then. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. One. And two, even with like mobs, there are certain ways to like attack a mob, when to retweet, where where to go. So if you don't lose SP or like stuff like that, it doesn't matter then anymore. You, you don't have an incentive to learn how to fight that particular mob. Okay. So if you get your ass kicked by the same mob a bunch of times, you learn how to like avoid him, how to like attack him, what was the best way to like kill him with your abilities, you know? And, and here's the thing. So I'm only saying that not ever playing the game. I did not play Alpha 1. I really yeah. wanted to. But, you know, that's why I'm going to play Alpha 2. I'm very excited for Alpha 2. Um, and, but again, I am keeping a completely open mind because I could actually yeah. co actually play it. Yeah, I could say I'm totally wrong. When you wrong. play, it feels natural. Yeah, when you play, it feels natural. It doesn't feel like unfair. Okay. Because I, I guess a lot of people are maybe comparing uh ashes to like dark souls because dark souls is a very hardcore game like it's yeah know, that i love yeah it's it so uh, so you're sure i'm very sure you're excited for elden ring then because that's gonna yeah, be yeah. a whole experience yeah, i can't but, wait to play it but again a lot of the um the things in dark souls is it's all for a learning experience there's a yeah, way exactly. there's a way to do it and if you do it incorrectly you will be punished and i feel like a lot of games now they don't really punish you you know in that yeah. sense and so i guess overall i guess i'm more concerned for the casual player but i think even for myself i need to realize that it's a test to actually toughen them up rather than yeah and give them kid gloves also if there's like a casual, if okay, if I'm a casual, how will I do? I will get a bunch of friends and play with three, four friends and actually play the game like that. Most of the casual casuals are not gonna like play solo for like an hour a day. They're gonna like play with their friends. So like then they're gonna have like help. So it doesn't really matter anymore for them, you know? No, yeah, I, I actually totally agree because again, I think a lot of the problems that arised from past MMOs was the lack of getting into a community or a guild. Uh, but that's not the case anymore, really. Like you can mm -hmm. literally jump into the Ashes Discord and you can choose from a plethora of guilds right now and, and go into their discords, meet people even before the game's out. So there's no reason yeah. to say, oh, I don't know anyone or I don't have anyone to play with. You're, you're literally saying that as an excuse. And I feel like that excuse just isn't valid anymore because there's plenty there's of opportunities to, to meet people. And also, like, in the game, you had the option to talk in, like, general chat or, like, with people around you. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that made it, like, really easy to get people to play with. You'd be like, hey, are you doing the same quest I'm doing? Or let's group up and do it together. So, like, how the game is designed, it's really easy for you to make friends and, like, people to, like, make, to, like, uh, play the game how you want at the level you are. Yeah. and Because and if they are, like, in that city, most likely are at the same level with you. So they're going to do the stuff with you. And I think because of how uh, slowed down the leveling is, especially when everyone starts, everyone's relatively going to be around the same level as you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless you're going off and just doing all this explore exploration or you're not killing anything. Like, it really just depends. But overall, like, if you're just naturally playing the game, like, people aren't going to be so far ahead of you. Like, yeah. there might be a, a person maybe two levels above you, but it's not going to be the way it is today where it's like, oh, I leveled my friend yesterday. I didn't play yes or I didn't play the day before. Uh, oh, and he's like 10 levels ahead of me or, or 15 levels ahead of me. Yeah, you can't even play with them anymore. It, exactly. Like, like in New World, like they played the day before me and I couldn't even play with them anymore because they're like so far ahead. And, and that's not going to be the thing with Ashes, especially if they keep it. Because I, I think uh, a one month timetable 
if, if you can go completely uninterrupted playing eight hours every day, I think taking one month would actually be okay because realistically, yeah. I think a lot of players aren't going to play like that. They're not going to play eight hours every day for 31 days. Um, and, and again, with, with messing up, uh, XP debt, PVP battles, you know, all of the things that can happen in between that ex you, if you keep going, that experience may take you double that. It may take you two months, yeah. three months to, to actually and, level. And I mean, more you want that you want to play the game for a long time. I feel like that's what like it's appealing about Ashes and used to be appealing about an MMO is something you can play for a really long time, not for like a week. No, and, and that was the because like I said, when I started World of Warcraft back in 2006, that was exactly the reason why, because leveling back then was hard and there were quests you can do by yourself, but there was a lot of quests you could not do by yourself. You would need to group up with people and, and complete the dungeon quest, complete the... Uh, they called them elite quest, which was like special mobs that were very powerful that you needed like more than one person to defeat. And I feel like all those quests are so important and it makes memories. It, it actually allows yeah, it, you to to create these I, awesome memories in your head, you know? It, it, exactly. Like that's what I loved about the alpha one. Like I did like memories. Like I, I did these things with like these guys on a this server with these guys. And then we did this. It's like so many like amazing memories because of how the game is like made yeah or it's like when you made kevin jordan fall to his death <laughs> like oh my god i i bullied so kevin funny. into playing with me that was so funny man like and he was just like why did i die and you're like did you, did you die yet did you die <laughs> if i can troll kevin oh i will do it every day that was so good that was so good but i think overall like for myself i I think the reason why I'm so excited for Ashes is because it's so nice to have a person at the helm like Steven that knows exactly what he wants for his game. And also plays his game. Like so many like devs, they don't even play their game. Like he actually plays the game so he knows what the game needs. Exactly. And I, I and I feel like with his experience, you know, him coming from Lineage 2, him coming from Arc Age and, and getting some of those principles that he wants for Ashes. Uh, and again, like I feel like he is going into a more modern way of looking at things, yeah, but, he, but he does want to keep things hardcore. He does want things to matter. Um, I think another principle that I'm really wanting to see uh, that I've actually never really done is professions. Like I, mm. I want oh to be a, a lumberjack. I, I really do. I want to chop down trees and, and, and be like a new world person, but in ashes, I, I just don't want to be a yeah. new world, but. And I feel like what people want and what Ash is going to be great at it is people want to play the game their own way, mm -hmm. you know, like have their own profession, have their own way of playing and Ashes is going to give that. And I feel like that's what actually keeps people playing and keeps people want to play the game is because they can do like whatever, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like escape from Tarkov in the past used to be really fun when like people would only play the market. Like my boyfriend will play for like the hours, the market, he will like make money in the market. He will never actually play, go and play the shooter. That's the market side, you know? Mm -hmm. So the same thing is going to be with Ashes. There are going to be a lot of people that just breed or like they might not even like level up to the max. They'll just like do their own thing, yeah. you know, and I feel like it's going to be amazing to see like everyone doing their own thing in in ashes i yes i think that's gonna be and again just the i call this uh ashes of creation i call it the game of thrones mmo because there's so much stuff shadiness yeah. that could happen like uh double crossing guilds drama like guild drama is gonna be huge especially coming from a streaming perspective that is mm -hmm. unlimited content because a guild could um, get so big and then fracture because there was a complete disagreement that happened. And then they have a guild war against each other and they start battling it out. Like there are so many cool things that could happen in Ashes. Yeah. And I feel like the one thing that Steven does very well is giving us the keys and, and saying, go wild, like do whatever you want. Yeah. Because a lot of games don't do that. They're, they're usually like if a guild war were to happen in World of Warcraft, well, they just go make another guild and you leave discord and that, that's it <laughs> like you know but in yeah. ashes it can, it's going to be totally different you know with just yeah because we'll have a lot of repercussions on it yeah yeah exactly so i guess overall like what does anything make you nervous 
about ashes? Uh, many things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are they? So I feel like I really want them to keep the UI simple to understand. Like, uh -huh. don't make it too complex and um, keep it simple. If someone is really, I don't know, like, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Don't overcomplicate it. It's about the gameplay, not about having, like, the screen busy with a All these million buttons. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, keep it, like, really simple for, like, players mm -hmm. to listen to bad, like, with any game. I'm, like, listening to bad feedback. It's like, you need to listen to people, but kind of, like, not. <laughs> kind of, like, no one is bad, you know? Yeah. When it's, like, not good for the game. No, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I think the one other thing that I see is that they're going to have like a council so like steven's gonna have like a lot of the streamers a lot of the people that like the ogs like yourself and like uh alpha soul and you know bustin and, and just all the people that were streaming back when um they i think they're gonna have their own little separate discord for feedback and actually saying like from their perspective like we've yeah. we've done this from the beginning this is a good direction or this is not a good direction i, I feel like feedback isn't going to be so much of an issue because I think Steven has a good head on his shoulders to know yeah. where he wants the game to be. But again, there's potentially a, a room, uh, or not a room, but there, this game can potentially have up to 4 million people uh, playing or this more. game. Or more, yeah, exactly. Because right now I believe they have over 3 million registered accounts on ashesofcreation.com. Yeah. But that was back in 2020. We're two years later, we haven't got an update yeah. to see how many more have signed up so i'm thinking use my code <laughs> i'll link the code down code. there for sure like it on my stream <laughs> or my youtube channel <laughs> no for sure i'll definitely have your code linked in the bottom of this video uh but no for sure so it, it to me i guess it's just one of those things that uh as long as steven does not stray from his vision that to yeah. me is the thing that i don't want because i feel like a lot of developers cave in a lot to yeah. bad feedback and they start shifting on their vision the vision yeah. that he's established is 27 thing just keep that just keep that and keep adding on to it but don't yeah. shift don't don't pivot into this unnecessary direction so yeah. and also like another thing i feel like um, after i did a podcast with kevin this is what like i'm really like uh -huh. be worried like kevin said that one of the things they did for WoW at the beginning mm -hmm. they made it uh like the first levels like they made it like really good mm -hmm. and i want to like actually to do the same like before they make the world huge and everything else to focus on the beginning part of the game to make it like perfect and mm -hmm. then do the rest like to you know like do the beginning good yeah and then focus on the rest and I, well, because I, that's so important no I, I completely agree but i feel like sometimes that's a double-edged sword because then to me the beginning is really good but the end game is boring because there wasn't enough work put into the end game because they put so much work into the beginning i just want a more balanced experience i want it to feel like it's the game every step of the way feels good and, yeah, and yeah. I, I don't want them to skimp out and say, well, we're going to have a really great level one to 30 experience, but level of 31 through 50 is going to be eh. like, I don't want them okay, to do that. Uh, maybe I should say it differently. Okay. Have like uh, one to like, I don't know, 20 really like clear in their mind and made by like the alpha two or beta one, you know? Uh huh. So like have that really like done by the next chapter of the game. Oh, okay. You no, know? I get what you're saying now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because no, I... Not I... like, do that in like beta. <laughs> Make sure like in beta that the beginning experience is nice, you know? Do that now and then focus correct. on the rest. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Because I feel like, again, uh, we can still wait a little while even then because, you know, people aren't going to level to max day one or even yeah. month, month one, really, right? So, I mean, it's it's going to be quite that adventure for people to actually go to. So I feel like, I guess let's kind of like wrap up this conversation a little bit. So when do you think, not Alpha 2 is gonna be released, but when do you think this game, Ashes of Creation, oh. when do you think it'll be released, the game itself? No idea. I mean, I don't think after Alpha 2 is gonna take that long. I don't think it's going to take like two years after Alpha 2. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, like a year after Alpha 2. So like 
a so, year and a half from now, I think. So I, I think, and this is just, again, just all speculation on my part, but I feel we're going to be in Alpha 2 for maybe a year. I think Beta 1 and Beta 2 will be a couple of months and then we'll yeah. release the game. So yeah. if that logic is sound, then I would say third or I would say probably fourth quarter of 2023 next year. Yeah. Yeah. If, but that's assuming everything goes smoothly. If there's a yeah, lot of issues exactly. in the Alpha 2 and there's like, oh, OK, these need to be fixed. This needs to be fixed. Uh, but I don't think there's going to be like major glaring issues. But again, you have to expect. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to see because. But I think if everything goes pretty smooth, I'd say a year yeah. we go in there, we fix everything up and then we're GG Hopefully. in 2023. And like another worry I have for them, they don't have the map finished yet. So like oh. the whole world finished yet. So I feel like that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> shouldn't they at least behind the scenes have that finished, please? No, 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 no. You know? I, and again, when is that going to happen? Because they kind of go in like sections. Mm -hmm. They have this dump by Alpha 1, but what's in Alpha 1 is not necessarily in the final game. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to have for Alpha 2 and then for Beta, but they're not necessarily in the final game content. Yeah. Because what you see right now in Alpha 1 is not part of the final map at all. Yeah, it's the Alpha Island, so like, is what they call it. Yeah, it's an Alpha Island, yeah. So it's like, why spend time doing that? Why not just... I don't know. Well, we'll I, have to see. I think it's because I, I... At least in my mind, I think they want stuff to feel uh, as polished as possible. Um, but again, I think from a front-end perspective, all, all the second continent is is just art. And for Unreal Engine 5 doing its thing, I think they're going to mm -hmm. knock out that, that second continent pretty quickly from an yeah, art perspective. Yeah. So and I'm, make I'm, sure you have quests and everything. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think I think we're going to be in good shape. But I mean, that's that's yeah. all left to be seen. But uh, yeah. so I guess wrapping it all up, like where can people find you, like your social medias and stuff like that? Yeah, uh, I'm Luki on Twitch and I think I'm Luki Lulupad on every other social like okay. uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Twitter. Like I'm everywhere. OK. <laughs> TikTok, <laughs> Luki Lulupad or Luki. Okay. And I'm going to yeah. definitely have those in the description below so people can definitely yeah. find you very easily. And when Ash is out, I'm going to stream every day for like a really long time. <laughs> and I will definitely like, be watching, for yeah. sure. A lot of people are taking off work. I'm like already preparing. I was supposed to go on vacation in October. Uh, I'm not because what if Alpha 2 is then? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I I'm preparing for Alpha 2 to play like nonstop. <laughs> I, I believe we all are. Like I did the same thing. Yeah. So I, I'm just eagerly waiting to see when exactly we can get in there. Yeah. But it was honestly such a pleasure talking with you. And thank you oh, so much. It was much. awesome talking with you. Yeah. Thank you so much for just being on and just having this chat. It was great. Well, it was awesome. Okay. <laughs> and uh, they can find you on. Are you going to be on Twitch only when Alpha 2 or before that? I haven't decided. <laughs> so I haven't decided if I want to do Twitch. I haven't, just decided, YouTube. If I, mm. I haven't decided if I just want to keep doing YouTube. Um, yeah. I feel like because of how small I currently am, uh, I just want to keep growing on YouTube. Just, you know, mm. uh, making content for Ashes of Creation um, and just see what happens. Um, I feel yeah. like once we get closer to the Alpha 2, I'll have a more uh, solidified decision if I want to start streaming yeah. on Twitch. But I think 90% of the time, I will probably try Twitch first for sure. Sounds good. All right. Well, again, thank you so much. It was awesome. Thank you as well. Out. And have All a right. great day. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this, then please hit that like button. Uh, subscribe to my channel for more uh, 1v1 content. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.